Hello, this is Scott. So, welcome to my YouTube series on advanced analytics and data science. Today, we're talking about viable and reliability failure time analysis, um, applications to engineering and process engineering, manufacturing. Um, so, I normally cover one of two types of videos, kind of a, a higher level um, types of problems that can be solved with data science and analytics, or a hands on tool application and today is going to be hands-on in Statistica. Um, some of these tutorials are in R, Python, uh, Spotfire, um, Streambase, other platforms, but today we're gonna talk about uh, Statistica specifically. So um, here's my contact information if you want to reach out to me. I'm gonna be using a data set that's available in Statistica. It's this Dodson data. It's uh, reference 1994, um, uh, page 22, table 2.5. So you'll find that in your examples if you go to data sets and scroll down. Uh, it's the same one that you can find here, Dotson 25, that I have pulled up. So the goal of this analysis is to fit a viable distribution uh, to these data and estimate the percentiles of the the reliability function. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here under statistics, under process analysis, I'm going to go to this, this button right here, um, viable analysis and reliability, and click OK. And then you get the uh, data here, the variables that I want, failure times is going to be time, the sensor indicator is going to be sensor. I'm going to click OK. We need to input the codes for um, complete responses and censored responses. So if I go here and I double click, and here I'm talking about the complete one, so I'll click zero complete, and then I'll double click on this one, one or censored. So you can see that code for censored responses. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff. So if I click OK at this point, this entry panel, I actually get into the analysis panel in Statistica. And the first is the default fit. So after reading the data, Statistica will by default compute the, the maximum likelihood ML parameters for the two parameter wobble distribution according to the location parameter equal to, to zero. And that's right here. Okay. Um, and then we have the um, viable results tab as well to show these estimates in the current parameter um, values. So right here, parameter values estimates, you can see that the shape parameter is 2.97444 and the scale parameter is 203. Note, I could recompute this if I change the scale, uh, I'm sorry, the offset parameter, I can recompute that, but we'll just for this exercise, whoops, we will leave it as zero. Okay. So again, um, this is the offset location here. Um, and again, I've got the radio button here for maximum likelihood shape and scale parameters. Um, and then I can adjust that and I can adjust my confidence limits. However, if I want the three parameter uh, wible, I can click this button right here and then I get the offset computed for me, the shape parameter computed for me, and the scale parameter, all three computed for me here. Um, let's see. So one thing to note is if I were to click any of the other um, information here, whatever computation that I currently have in um, essentially will be used. So make note of that. Here, I'm going to go back to the ML shape parameter. I'm going to make this zero um, and compute it, recompute it one more time. And, um, okay, so one of the other things that, that I can do is I can look at the, um, the, the different output here. Um, but the, the maximum likelihood estimates for the two parameter a viable distribution. Again, let me recompute. 
Um, again, shape parameter 2.97, scale parameter 203.3, um, essentially. Um, you can compare these against the estimates for the derived from probability plotting. So first on the reliability and distribution function tab right here at the top, um, I want to select the non-parametric button. And then under the confidence intervals, um, and then I'm going to of course, this will cause all the plots to be based on a non-parametric or rank-based estimate of the cumulative distribution function. And the resulting probability plot can be used to estimate the parameters of the viable distribution. Okay, so now we want to click the probability plot button here to actually get a display of the, of the button in the graph. So this plot shows that the uh, observed failure data, the linear fit here, um, is in the 95% uh, bounds for the non-parametric confidence of reliability um, is indicated. So here on the y-axis, I have the you know the log of the log of one over one minus the CDF the cumulative density function here and then the log time to failure t minus the location here, and then the, the actual points. Um, the other thing that I have here, oops, is the parameter estimates. So these, these parameter estimates um, essentially is the exponential of the um, negative intercept over the slope so that I get a shape parameter of 3.3 three, four, two, two, and a scale of 190 here, okay? Uh, let's see, what else do we want to do? Um, uh, one thing I was going to note is that this estimate is pretty close to our original estimates, right? So for the shape and the uh, scale parameters, not too far off there. And then lastly, um, I'm looking at R square of 96.18%. To, um, to look at the goodness of fit test, so um, what I want to do here under the advanced tab is click on this reliability, um, goodness of fit, uh, goodness of fit. And then I can look at the Hollander Proshan or the Mann Schuler Fertig. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that uh, test. Um, and I can look at the actual uh, test statistic as well as the p-value for those particular tests. And um, so we, we would not reject and that the fact, and, and that indicates a, a reasonable fit to the data here. Um, so the next thing we want to do is locate, um, estimate the, location parameter and um, so we're going to use the two uh, parameter viable distribution um, it appears to have a pretty good fit but suppose that we well and for this this two parameter um, one but suppose that we were to think for some reason that um, the uh, offset was not zero then if I wanted to look at the r square versus the location uh, parameter. I could do that. Um, and then I could look at this, this particular uh, plot here um, and look at the R squared. So it's, a, it's apparent from this graph that R squared rises steadily um, up to, this, to the small censored failure time recorded in the data. Uh, if you if you remember back to to the data here, um, whoops, back here. Um, and so that's consistent with you look back at the uh, when we did the three parameter estimate of uh, the location parameter being at forty one point 
nine seven would would yield the maximum uh, r squared for this for this data. So if we go back to the analysis panel and I were to go back and reset this um, to the three parameter model and hit summary, then I would get my um, parameter values for, for location, shape, and, and scale, and then the actual um, confidence limits for each one of which each one of the parameters there uh, in the table. And then there are other things that we could do, certainly. Um, we haven't looked at all the different types of plots, but let's just do one last thing and let's um, get some percentiles and, and confidence level, levels. That's under the reliability distribution function itself so that I can actually look at the output here. Um, so the spreadsheet shows that the percentile values in 1% increments um, from, you know, in the case values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to through, you know, 99. Um, and the time value is equal to 179 point, um, sorry, the time value Oh, what threw me off? Okay, so the time value for the 50th percentile is 143.64, um, and so on. I can look at that. Um, I could rerun this model as well. Uh, if we went back and we were to recompute based on zero and recompute, and then go back and look at the and then the confidence, I'm sorry, the percentile values and look at the 50th percentile here, it'd be 179.72. So um, that's what I'd remember, it kind of threw me off. So anyway, that's a very quick splash into reliability. The other thing to note is that there is a lot of documentation here. Um, so uh, under viable analysis, this is this actually under reviewing process analysis results, viable, and you can look at the different tabs um, and the different output, quite a bit of information there, even with more links. So I uh, will leave you with that. I hope to see you again next time.